Alrighty everyone, welcome to your 30th video and in this video, actually what I did in between the last video and this video is I uploaded the register.php file and I tested it out and everything looks to be going smoothly. However, now what we need to do is we need to make that prompt page. So let me go ahead and show you guys what happens. Say a user was the register with their name bucky at yahoo.com and the password of password they submit. Whenever they submit it, all of their information successfully goes into the database already, but check it out. They hit submit, it's good. Now it should take them to a page that just has a message on it, and the message just says, um, you know, thank you for registering, an email has been sent, please click on the link to activate your account or something like that. So that's what page we have to make now instead of this ugly page. So like I said, in the last um tutorial what I did is I named that page prompt.php and all this page does is it basically just gives the user a message so what I did already to save you guys some time is I made the shell of this and I pretty much included the core basic stuff that we already did in the PHP section and in the HTML section I just you know already filled in the title I linked to our main CSS page and I included the header and search code and the footer code. So all of this is done already. We don't have to do it again because we already took care of that in the last tutorial. However, the only other thing that we need to do in the HTML section for this prompt.php page is we need to make it a little bit different than the main layout. We don't want a section on the left hand side and a section on the right hand side. We only want one middle section. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Go ahead and make a div and give it the ID of outer. And go ahead and end this baby. Now this, I just need this div so I can center what's on the inside. This page is basically going to be a box, like I said, with a message in the middle. So go ahead and add another div and give it the ID inner. Now in here, right here is where we're going to be creating some, the message. Now the message is going to say, you know, um, whenever we need to leave a message to a user, like in this case, we're going to say, you know, we sent you an email, click on the link on your email to activate your account, but the message is going to differ. However, since we don't want to create a new web page for each message, we're just going to create a simple PHP function and we're going to call it create message. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass it in a parameter of x or a variable and depending on what variable this is is what message we want to output to the user. So just remember inside here is going to be a message that changes depending on what we need to tell the user. So now that we created two new divs outer and inner what we need to do now is we need to style them. So go ahead and make a new file and save this one as in your CSS folder prompt.css. Now if you guys are saying OMG another CSS file this is going to take forever I thought we were done with this. Well the good news is it's not going to take forever we only need to do we only need to style two quick things the outer and the inner. So after this tutorial we're going to be done with it it's going to be super quick we don't need to worry about register.css or main.css those are done. So let's go ahead and style outer first and remember this was just the box that we could center everything so set the width equal to 100 percent and set the text align to center what this is going to do is it's pretty much going to center the inner box so let me just copy this and change this to inner and now for the inner box remember this is the box that's pretty much going to be the message the message is going to go in here so first change the display to inline block and now just go ahead and give it a border of let's say one pixel solid gray and now set the width the overall width of the website is a thousand so I think 600 pixels will look just pretty good and padding might as well go ahead and set this to 10 pixels now for margin what I want to do is I want to set this to 10 pixels auto and now the only other thing I want to do is right now we have a square plain old box sitting in the middle of our screen with some message in it. 
just to make it look a little bit prettier I want to give it rounded corners and I also want to give it a shadow so let me go ahead and do that real quick border this is how you give it rounded corners and I'm guessing you guys already know this border radius of seven pixels remember the more pixels the more around the corners and in order to make this compatible with Firefox and what's it called Safari and crap what we need to do is change this one to Moz and change this one to WebKit so that's how we take care of the rounded corners for all the browsers now the only other thing that we have to do now is we want to add a shadow and just like this little attribute whenever you had to make it compatible with all the different browsers you need to do the same thing with this as well so box shadow and we'll make this 5 pixels 5 pixels 15 pixels and the color of the shadow is going to be a0 actually I want to caps like that a0 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 now just to clarify the different settings right here are 5, 5, 15, and the color is this. The horizontal shift, the vertical shift, pretty much how much over and how much down do you want it. The blur, or how much do you want it to spread. Do you want a real nice, tight, wow, I really must. Do you want a nice, tight shadow, nice and crisp, or do you want it nice and blurry? The more pixels, the more blurry. And this is the color. You can have a red shadow if you want. This is like a gray. So now, just like before, copy this and twice more. We need this one, Moz, and the other one, WebKit. So copy Moz, stick it here, copy WebKit, stick it here. So now we have a border for Internet Explorer, Firefox, and Chrome and Safari. And one of these should probably cover Opera and all the other browsers too. So there we go. There is the CSS. We can go ahead and save this and close it because we are done with it. The only other thing that we have to do is now that we created this function create message we actually need to go ahead and create the function which is basically going to take a variable x and the x is just a number that gets passed in through the URL and depending on that number we output a message. It's going to be an incredibly simple function and uh, there you go. So I'll see you in the next tutorial and that's what we're going to be doing.